on this week's episode of Live Large. My focus when working the bench press is to build muscle. I'm not too concerned with the amount of weight that I'm lifting. Vince, what do you think is the biggest motivator of all time? Most powerful. A lot of people are surprised that I even eat before I work out. People say, oh, aren't you not supposed to eat? Um, heck, that is the biggest mistake you can make. For me to spend two hours a day preparing food is not worth my time. To me, time equals money. I should first welcome you to uh, my brand new home here in Tampa, Florida. From a weak and scrawny skinny Vinny, to 210 pounds of solid muscle, Vince Del Monte is now living large in and out of the gym, and so can you. My focus when working the bench press is to build muscle. I'm not too concerned with the amount of weight that I'm lifting. I just, to be honest, I just don't like lifting really heavy things. It's just not my thing. <laughs> um, although I do it for the sake of building muscle. I want to teach you how I do the bench press and how I focus on um, one little technique to maximize the tension on my chest. It's so simple. I, not a lot of guys talk about it though. And um, after I get into my flat back position, feet grounded, hips wide, back arched. I take a medium grip, but as I'm doing my bench press, I squeeze the bar as hard as I can and I try and push it together. Almost like I'm trying to crush the bar together and then I press up. I want you to think about that one thing the next time you're bench pressing. I want you to squeeze the bar as hard as you can and push it together as you're pressing up. You're gonna get way more contraction on your pec. Welcome to Ask Vince. So in follow up to last week's question, Vince, what do you think is the biggest motivator of all time? Most powerful. All right, this one's easy. It's a deadline. I always say this, goals without deadlines are dreams. And um, anything that's ever got accomplished in my life was associated with a deadline. And uh, I mean, just look at your own life. Think about tests, um, exams, wedding dates, vacations, Christmas. You know, they all are attached with very, very um, hard deadlines. If you don't get something achieved by that day, you're screwed. So if you look at any of the biggest successes in my life, everything is tied to a deadline. Um, you know, if you ask somebody, you know, what are you training for? Well, I, you know, they don't have a deadline. There's nothing at stake. There's no blood in the game. There's no reason for them to be successful. So something magical happens when you say, I'm going to achieve this goal by this date. So that's why guys who are um, competing in shows get so ripped year in and year out because they're constantly setting deadlines for themselves. So they're forced to make things happen. So I really encourage people to um, uh, don't just train to train. Train for something or for a certain date. Plan a vacation. Compete in a show. Do a 12-week transformation contest. Get some blood in the game and make it hurt if you don't achieve the goal. Deadlines are the most powerful form of motivation. Nothing compares. I have learned that you just have to set a deadline to get things done. Thanks, Vince. You're welcome. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about pre-workout nutrition. Now a lot of people are surprised that I even eat before I work out. People say, oh, aren't you not supposed to eat? Um, heck, that is the biggest mistake you can make, especially if your goals are to build muscle. Now what I like to do is first figure out the optimal time to eat, and for me it's about 60 minutes before a workout. Some guys that's too soon, you're gonna to have to play with that. One to two hours is probably the ideal for the majority of people because you don't want gastrointestinal upset while you're training. You got heavy weights above your head or on your back. Um, so we've got the heating pan going right now. I'm about to head to the gym in about an hour and a half from now. So I've given myself enough time. That's another mistake. A lot of guys start preparing their meal too late. So before they know it, um, you know, it's 15 minutes before they have to leave and they're just putting the last bite in their mouth and you're gonna, again, not get that food into your bloodstream. So this all, all these strategies we're talking about each week work together. Um, now my approach towards pre-workout nutrition is very simple. Um, I apply some very simple logic to it. And um, I like to 
eat fish pre-workout. The reason I eat fish is because it's one of the fastest digesting proteins. Now, does it make sense to have a protein like meat an hour before you go to the gym? No, because it probably takes three, four hours to even get into your bloodstream. By having a piece of white fish, that is gonna be in my bloodstream in about an hour. So I'm gonna have a steady stream of amino acids in my bloodstream and one of my strategies while I'm working out is to have a workout shake that consists of the carbolin, which spikes my insulin. So my insulin is gonna be intentionally high during my workout. So this is gonna pump even more amino acids into my muscles. So that's gonna help promote recovery, it's gonna help prevent catabolism, and um, it's gonna just help maximize amino acid uptake. Um, you know what, I usually just have one slice but um, because there's only one slice left, I'm gonna throw both slices in there. My wife might want a slice as well. And um, if not, I'll have it tomorrow, so I save some time. So we're always efficient with when we're cooking. So we have fast digesting protein. The next thing, take home lesson here, is no fat. You do not want to eat fat before you work out. The reasoning is very simple. When we're working out, you should be spiking your insulin with a workout shake that consists of dextrose or carbolin or maltodextrin, something that spikes your insulin, keeps cortisol levels down, and also helps push the carbohydrates into your bloodstream. Now, insulin is a storage hormone, which is good, um, but it's also bad because if insulin levels are high you're going, and you've got, blood, you've got fat floating around your bloodstream, that can end up going to your fat store. So no fat before your workouts. Now, the last thing we need to add to this puzzle is Carbohydrates, what kind of carbs do we have, fast or slow? I like to have slow releasing carbs before my workout, something like brown rice or oatmeal, because it's sustaining, it's slow uh, releasing. Um, now some guys, this is kind of where it come, becomes a little individualized. You can have right white rice, because that's gonna get into your bloodstream soon, but it's also gonna spike your insulin. I don't want the insulin spike until my actual workout. Um, so that's why I have like a slower releasing carbohydrate like brown rice. Now uh, I've already cooked that for you guys because that takes 15 minutes to do. And um, it's actually already pretty warm. If it wasn't warm, I'd just throw it on the frying pan there. Um, I like to stick by my fish while I'm cooking. I don't want to overcook it, denature it, so I keep an eye on it. Uh, fish cooks pretty quickly. And um, again, white fish is typically your best bet. Now, what are some alternatives to eating white fish and brown rice before you work out? Uh, you could have an apple and, um, or a banana with um, some tuna. That's a good option. You could have a protein shake. Um, that's pretty fast absorbing. Um, you could have a slice of bread. It's not bad, like a bagel. But again, don't put peanut butter or butter on it because that's going to counteract the effects. All right, keep an eye on your steam, you know. And again, that's pretty much it. So pre-workout nutrition, very critical time of the day, uh, one to two hours before your workout. Uh, slow releasing carbohydrate, fast releasing uh, protein, no fats. That's the formula, stick to it, and you're gonna have an awesome, awesome workout. All right, I gotta finish cooking here. I gotta get this in me, and uh, we'll see you next time. Hey, what's up guys? This section of living large, we're gonna teach you two lessons today in how to live large. Come on into the kitchen here. I should first welcome you to uh, my brand new home here in Tampa, Florida. For those who don't know, my wife and I come down south to escape the winter cold. And um, there's a number of reasons for that, for primarily to uh, be in a warmer environment. Uh, but number two is to be in an environment that inspires success and that um, just ensures that we have no excuse not to be successful, specifically with our fitness goals. If you don't know, I'm getting ready for a show on April the 16th, so it's really critical that um, I'm in a place that keeps me focused on my goals. So I wanna kinda give you guys a tour of the kitchen here and um, teach you a few things. Now, uh, number one, when you look at all the foods that I brought into my home, is there any reason that I won't be successful? You see anything unhealthy here? You see anything that could potentially put on fat and not maximize my muscle gains? 
No. So the first lesson is to control the foods that come into your home. You're the only person who has a key to your house, so there shouldn't be any garbage coming in. Does that make sense? Alrighty. So another thing I want to share is, um, for, for those who don't know, I'm self-employed. So this little lesson might not apply to everybody, but it may motivate you to want to move to a profession that allows you to be self-employed. So uh, for me, you're going to notice a lot of the foods are pre-cut and they're in their most convenient forms because to me, time equals money. And for me to spend two hours a day preparing food is not worth my time because um, I make X amount of dollars. Um, in a two hour period and for the little extra that I spend at the grocery store to buy certain foods to save me time in the kitchen, it's just not worth it. So think about that and I'll give you guys some examples. So let's start off with the chicken breast here. As you can see, the chicken breasts are already cut up and they're, they're individually packaged so I can freeze them but I can just take them out the night before to thaw them out and uh, that saves me time. Uh, tuna. Um, don't have to say anything about that, but even the, you know, I go as far as buying this kind of lemon, the stuff I can just squirt on instead of slicing it up myself. As you can see, the vegetables are already pre-cut. I personally have no patience, <laughs> and I'm not really good at it, uh, for cutting up vegetables, so I buy pre-cut veggies. Again, it costs a little bit more, but it's not worth my time doing it myself. The burgers here, um, chicken burgers. Um, Another great example, I should also note, uh, these are all antibiotic free, uh, they're grass fed, organic, and there's no growth hormones in any of these foods. Um, same thing, we've got a lot of fresh seafood, nice and convenient. Um, egg whites, eggs, brown rice gets cooked quickly. Some foods there's nothing you can do about, like yams, avocados, if you don't know how to slice these quickly. Um, Get your wife to show you or you know, find out. My wife knows how to slice these up in 30 seconds, so I don't waste any time there. Ezekiel cereal, well, one of the healthiest, healthiest complex carbs instead of oatmeal. Again, this is more convenient, just as healthy. Um, mixed nuts, we've got our olive oil, Frank's hot sauce, um, spam, um, spam, <laughs> pan. <laughs> um, all the vegetables. Now this is big. This is this is a game changer for me. I used to spend so much time in the kitchen um, slicing up vegetables and wasting time and losing money. Now I just buy the pre-cut vegetables, and um, I have no excuse to come away from my computer when I'm working, come into the kitchen and make a salad, or to get on, you know, continue to follow my diet. So again. Um, I'm creating an environment for success, and I want you to start looking for ways you can do that as well. Um, we got the fruit here. My wife focuses eats more fruit than I do. Um, and one last thing, I just give you guys a little sneak peek at is the uh, supplement cover. I buy my supplements in bulk, so I never run out of anything. So as you can see, we've got four living fuels here. That's my Super Greens product. Um, you know, if I run out, there's one ready to go. So I have, again, no excuse not to be successful. I put a high expectation on myself, and I want you guys to create um, high expectations and standards for yourself too. All the supplements are here, everything from proteins to amino acids to vitamins to minerals to joint products, uh, greens product, energy products for my workouts, it's all here. I've got no excuse not to be successful. Um, I'm saving time. Um, I'm saving money at the same time and I'm getting the results I want. So that's what Living Large is all about and uh, I want you to start taking some of those lessons you just learned and incorporate them into your life starting today. On next week's episode of Live Large. Alright, let's talk about one arm dumbbell rows. This is to develop your upper lat. So Vince, what is your approach to nutrition? I like to keep things simple. Today we're talking about workout nutrition, an advanced strategy to really put your muscle building results over the edge. I want you to think of something that you can do that can impact other people's lives. It doesn't matter how big or small it is, just take action on something. Experience Live Large with Vince Del Monte, next Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, only on YouTube. Click subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Don't forget to show some love and click the like and share button.